Hi guys and welcome back. It has been such a long time since we filmed a video. It has been a very weird couple of months, hasn't it, without football? Yeah, it has, yeah. Um, I know people have been saying, where's Emily? Um, she's there. Hi. Um, <laughs> you've been off doing your own thing, so I've left you to um, to carry on. So yeah, we obviously we left it until we had football back that we could get Emily back on. Um, don't want to stress her out too much, you know. Um, she's very prima donna sometimes, so shocking. Not true. No, but um, it's been tough without football. But obviously, last night, recording this on the Thursday morning, last night football was back, and yeah, it was good to be back. And now I'm a bit uh, wary about this weekend's game. It's kind of hit me that it's coming up, and now we've got to go and focus on that. But there's lots of talking points that I. I I haven't been able to go over since my last chat with um, Gabriel, so I think we've got a lot to dive into. We've, um, we're going to restructure the show. This is going to be a once a week show now. More like a podcast, I guess, but not a podcast. It's going to be a show and it's going to have everything in it from the week's talking points to the last match to the next match. So obviously it's going to be much longer. You can stop and start it and listen whenever you want. Um, but we think it's going to be much more enjoyable like this. We've uh, spoken to several people and we think this is the best way to go. So uh, Em's going to run through it now. Indeed. So before we get into the video, please do not forget to like this video. Obviously it genuinely really does help the channel. Comment your thoughts down below. How much have you missed the wonderful game that is football? Because I know I've missed it more than anything. And subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, let's run through let's get into it. what will be in today's show. So today we will be talking about players who will be departing. Who is, who is out of contract? Is it right or wrong for them to be leaving? Should they be staying? We will run through all of those issues. Pet to leave. Something that was quite a shock, I think, to the majority of us. What's going to happen now? We're going to talk about who should take the reins at St Andrews after Pep Quartet's departure and going over our fixture this weekend against West Bromwich Albion. James, let's talk about the players that are going to be departing at the end of the season. Um, Marabti is not extending his contract, contract past June 30th. Mm -hmm. um, Camp is and his contract runs out at the end of that period. Um, Jack McGoma is going. Um, Stockdale has already gone, um, by the looks of things. And Chet Kate has gone as well, which I think was a bit of a disappointing one in the sense that he had a lot of um, ability, but I don't think his attitude was quite right. No, no, no. There was always talk of attitude problems within the club um, and within several people that I've spoken to that know him. It was so plain to see how how talented this kid is. Like He's got the world at his feet at times. You know, he's brought in by Gianfranco Zola, who you know, said what you want about his coaching ability, but he knew a good player. Mm. And I think that um, Keita was someone that possessed a lot of ability. I think maybe not a left back, maybe more of a left winger. Uh, but when you know your attitude's not there, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're not going to apply yourself, I think that the biggest case, and Blues fans were also in the biggest case maybe in football, is Ravel Morrison. Um, somebody that you know, Sir Alex Ferguson said for years was the most talented player he ever came across, ever. Uh, Rio Ferdinand and Wayne Rooney all said the same things. He was the best, but had a shocking attitude. And it was, you know, it's the same case with Cater, I think, you know. There's a reason that every manager that's come and gone since Zola is refused to play him. I think Redknapp gave him a half a chance mm. and he didn't really take it. Clotet gave him a half a chance in pre-season this year, didn't take it. Um, Cottrell didn't fancy him. Nobody fancied a go on him, and that's a surprise. Uh, but then, obviously, you have to understand that there's a common occurrence with that one. Um, so I think that to get him off the wage bill, which I think did we discuss did we discuss it before? Um, he was on quite a large wage, I think. Um, I'm not sure we did discuss it before, but I do know that he is on a substantial wage compared to yeah. some of our other players that are first team starters. Yeah. So it's a, it's a difficult one because you always want to see players do their best, but once if it's their attitude, what can you do? Um, I want to talk about Kerem Morabti. I personally don't think he's been given enough of a chance. I think that when he did play, he was, he was great. He was great in that number 10, slightly off a striker. I think he really brought something different to our team. And we played really well in those games. Cardiff, I know the result went so badly, but that was just matters on the pitch. In those first 20 minutes... Yeah. The team was electric, and a lot of that was down to Kerem Rabti. Yeah. 
Why do you think they haven't extended his contract? And do you think that he's not been given a fair shot? What What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't think he's been given a fair crack at the whip, if I'm brutally honest. I think that when we have seen him, like you said, I think he's been... Has he really put in many bad performances? I don't think so. Um, not off the top of my head. I think he scored against Wigan this year. He scored um, against Cardiff... Uh, not Cardiff, sorry. Um, Blackburn away. He put in really great performances against Middlesbrough and Cardiff, mm -hmm. like you say. So most of the games that I've seen him in this season, he's looked, he's never been like set the world alight sort of player, but he's definitely been a steady player. He definitely linked up well um, with Crowley. I think they had a really solid understanding. But again, I think that if we're serious about changing the club's direction and if we're serious about moving forward, I think that we've got to let go of a lot of dead wood and we're still three years on clearing a lot of dead wood from past mistakes. And I think Morabti isn't a mistake, but I think he's he's probably on, a again, a relatively good wage. Oh, he's not one of the highest earners. Yeah. He's not a low earner. But I just don't think the club see the value in keeping him. Um, me, personally, I think I said that I would have given him another year simply because I think the squad looks so thin at the minute and it's a big risk going into these nine games with the, the depth we've got. Mm. I think we've spoken about that previously as well, off camera, we've spoken <laughs> about the the worry that I think we've got 13 or 14 first teamers left. Yeah, I think we went through it and we were sort of ticking off players that are going or have already gone or have played their part this season and that won't be anymore. And we are quite, we've always said in our videos, the last few seasons we've been doing this, that our strength and depth is not enough. Yeah. And now our strength and depth really is not enough. No. And going into these last nine nine games. Yeah, yeah. Um, getting all confused with the Premier. Going into these last nine games now, it's going to be a struggle if we do get any injuries. Yeah, well, I think the only positive is that I think a lot of the youth players that are looking to break through and that mm -hmm. have been um, put in place for the last nine games are actually really very talented players. I think it's been grumbled and groaned if these players are going to make it but I think Jaden Reed is someone we picked up from Swansea mm. and he's been very very good in the um, in the development squad this season and he looks a really powerful you know pacey striker so I'm hoping we could see him at some point I think Fernandez has been given a, a squad number and yeah, he looks he was. very talented again um, well probably our best Spanish acquisition I would say possibly this um over the last 12 months, mm -hmm. I think we've bought in six or seven, yeah. but he's been the best one. Um, Ryan Sturk, who I've watched from the six tender years. age of seven or eight, he used to play with my brother uh, in local leagues. He is a fantastic player, Wales under-21s international, and he's going to be very talented in the future. I'd like to see him go out on loan, to be honest, next season to get some first-team action. Uh, Con Cannon, Boyd Munts. So we've got a lot of young exciting players but it's bedding them all in at once it's yeah. such a big risk um but yeah as for you know Morabti, i think that uh, he's someone that you know you'd have liked to have seen maybe given another year but i understand the decision also to if we're going to bring in a fresh manager he's probably going to want his own squad next season yeah and Morabti, you know probably might not fit into that manager's squad um squad plans and i think the final major first team player that is going is Jack Magoma. He's been at the club for half a decade, isn't it? Yeah. That's a long time. He's been around for five years and now he's 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 going. I think it's a difficult one for me because Magoma's one of those players where when he's on his day he is exceptional. But I think maybe his legs have gone, he's getting on a bit in terms of footballing terms. What do you think about Magoma going? Would you have given him another year? Again, it would have only have been for two reasons to give him another year. One being squad depth. We don't have it. We don't have a lot of it. We've only got one recognised um, senior winger now mm -hmm. being Bella. I know we play Bellingham and Crowley wide, but they're not wide players. They're central players. Um, and we're going to be a natural wide player. Mm -hmm. I think at least maybe till the end of the season would have been a nice option to have. Um, but I think the club, are, like I say, trying to change the ethos. Um, Magoma would have been again a reasonable earner at the club he's probably built up his salary over the last couple of years getting a few new contracts so he was one that I think 
would have been the toughest of decisions, but he's got no resale value. And when we say we're changing the ethos, he's got no resale value now. It might be worth, you know, cutting ties with him and letting him go and find his next club. Maybe at Championship, maybe at a lower league. I could see him going to, I say Coventry, but, you know, I don't think he fits their style. So, but I can see him going to like a newly promoted Championship club, a lower, a decent League One team. Mm. He certainly would fit in there. Um, but I think that it's a tough one because, you know, he's, he's done a lot for us. I know he's, he's divided opinions. So certainly with me at times, he's infuriated me where he's been the most infuriating player on the pitch simply because I know that on his day, he can be the best player on the pitch. He's got so much pace, so much energy. He's got flair um, and he's got a, a lovely eye for goal at times. But um, yeah, at times he just doesn't show up. And I think that... Uh, Magoma's one that I think will certainly hold in high regard for future years simply because I think that he gave everything for the club, in mm. all honesty. But I think it's time, again, cut ties. Let's maybe bring in a fresh bunch of faces next season and give it a, a, a good push for that top 10 um, and see where we can end up next season. I think the last thing to talk about on this similar topic before we move on is goalkeepers. Uh, Lee Camp's only been given the extension until the end of the season. We only really have... Conor Truman and did we let go of Jake Weaver? We let go of Jake yeah. Weaver. We only really now have Conor Truman. Who's made first team appearances. Yeah. yeah. So that's a bit of a worrying issue, isn't it? Are we going to give Camp another year? Have we got people already lined up to come in? Because if we haven't, alarm bells are ringing for me. Yeah, I think that it was when I saw the announcement, I thought, here we go, that's them giving him another season. Mm. Um, but it was only an extension till the end of the nine games. That was to be expected, I think. Uh, I think they may have someone lined up. I think that We Are Birmingham reported that uh, the club had inquired about Seni Dieng from uh, QPR. QPR. Uh, he's been on a load of commentary. He's, and his statistics have been very impressive this season. And I spoke to my um, counterpart at QPR um, for a little bit of a load. I think it's when the rumour came out about two months ago, I mm. think I spoke to him. Uh, mixed reviews I got. Mixed reviews. Can be a really good player, but certainly is a bit of a prima donna as well himself by the sounds of it. Um, so I'm going to reserve judgment though because he's never I've never seen him play. I've seen clips and I've seen bits of him at Doncaster, um, but his statistics, you know, don't lie. And he's still a young kid for a keeper, so um, I think that maybe that might hold some water into where we're going with camp. But my feeling towards camp, I think I've not hidden it, is that. I'd give him another year simply because of he'd be a great backup, a cup goalkeeper. If we if our first choice keeper got injured, um, he'd be a good option to have his experience for the younger goalkeepers to to help them in training yeah. week in week out is invaluable. Mm. Other than that, I don't think he, I don't think he can cut it as first team goalkeeper anymore. I'll be ruthlessly honest. If we're serious again about pushing, he's not the keeper to get you top ten. Um, but, keep him on as a esports. <laughs> I think he holds more value now for the club in, uh, yeah, he's football manager. But he did well, didn't he? He did a really good job. Really I really well. enjoyed that. Yeah, he did. Some of the, some of the interviews are a bit odd, but... Um, he's a lad. He's yeah, a laugh. No, I like him. Um, so, moving on. I think it was very surprising when I was sat in my office and my phone buzzed and I saw the notification from Blues that... Pep was leaving. Oh, I was halfway through my DIY and that you, you shouted me down. It was it was very shocking. It was shocking. And I read through the article and I thought, okay, it's not the board's fault. So I'm not mad about it. Yeah. Um, you can't be because obviously, like with the whole coronavirus situation, everything that's gone on with the world and Pep having to go home and coming back and you know, it does make you evaluate things and maybe he wants to go coaching elsewhere, maybe. You don't know. No. Um, but the decision was made for Pep and Pep only. And he obviously still loves the club. So that is out of Blues fans' hands. We yeah. can't blame anyone for this scenario. But we do find ourselves, again, in the reoccurring scenario that it does feel like of it's summer and we're looking for a new manager. Now, what did you think about Pep leaving. Did you did you expect this? Because I know your dad did. <laughs> but he did seems you? to know everything. Yeah, it's weird. I need to bring him on a bit more. He's like mystic. Um, mystic West. Yeah, he sees a bit <laughs> into the future. 
I felt like it was Groundhog Day. I'll be ruthlessly honest, I didn't see it coming. I felt a bit stupid then because we put up our interview with uh, Gabriel. Me and Gabriel spent a long time talking about we were actually big admirers of, of Pep as a footballing manager. A um, lot to learn, we said. He's very inexperienced, he makes naive mistakes. But we think he's, he's a very intelligent man. And we spent all at least half of that episode talking about him just for him a week later to, to step down. So... Um, yeah, it really, really did shock me. I know a lot of people had seen the rumours. I know the rumours had been um, circulating on social media, but I didn't think anything of them because the last I'd heard is that you know that the board were really behind him, mm-hmm. and I think that they were relatively pleased with the the direction we were moving in. Not like you know, wow, we you know we're up in to the top half, top ten, but I think they could see small progress. Yeah, um, considering what he'd been asked to do with what he had. I didn't see it coming. I really didn't. And I think that neither did the board, I'll be honest. I think reading into the the article that was released last Monday, the way it did, and Dong making a statement and the club making no comment after that, I don't think I don't think they planned for this. No. And this is why I think the managerial appointment, which we'll get onto in a bit, is gonna take longer than um than we think because they've had to start the process from Monday, mm. last Monday. They're not going to have someone appointed by this time next week. So, yeah, I took everybody by surprise. I'm sure that the, they'll have had um, a manager's review, which they do every quarter, I think, where they evaluate how he's doing and if they are happy with him or not. I'm sure it was due mm. at some, some point. So it, maybe they'd have said, well, we're not overly pleased sitting in 17th, 16th. Um but we're not we're not going to sack you, but we think we could do better. And he might have gone, well, I might fancy going back home. I might have an opportunity elsewhere, maybe by the sounds of it. Um, or I just simply want to go home because his family live in Spain. And they might have come to a mutual agreement. It's certainly not a sack in this. It's certainly mm-hmm. not the board going, no, we're not happening. Um, and I actually think that paints the board in a bit of a better light for the new manager coming in because they can see it's not a sack in. He's been given a lot of time yeah. and res- okay resources. So, um, yeah, it might work in their favour this time with it not being a... They're not having to get rid of another manager because is this the sixth manager in three and a half years? Did I read right? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Rowett left. So, Rowett, so, Zola, uh, Redknapp. Cottrell. Carsley was temporary. Yeah, but that was really yeah, no. count. Cottrell, Monk and Pep. Yeah. Six permanent managers. Six, yeah, six permanent managers in three and a half years is is startling, and it is, and it's scary. That's why we don't get anywhere. I think mm-hmm. is my we said, didn't we? Yeah, we do say a lot that stability is probably the biggest thing that we need going forward. But I, I genuinely do think that I know Pep was given a lot of stick this season by some of the fans, but I do think we were beginning to go in the right direction. Rightfully he was, so, sometimes. Well, yes, rightfully, rightfully so. so. But he was being. He was given a almost impossible job of a squad that wasn't his with a permanent, a uh, temporary manager, temporary permanent high, coach. Yeah, it's just it, nothing was certain for him, and he made a lot of mistakes at the beginning of the season. But there was a turning point, and you could see he was actively learning as yeah. we were going along, and we were beginning to build something. He got rid of a lot of deadwood in the, in the January transfer window, getting rid of. Um, Vialba and Jimenez and you know he brought in Hogan and he had was beginning to make some really good progress but maybe he's realized it maybe it's a little bit too much for him maybe he just doesn't enjoy it as much as coaching we won't ever know yeah, and I don't is. particularly want to speculate about it out of respect for Pep but yeah that was it was a bit of a shock yeah it was he's, and he's a great guy um, and he's you know he's done his best he's never I don't think he's ever slacked I think he's always he put his heart on his sleeve and he's always um, acted with dignity. Um, but yeah, it took me by real storm. Um, and I've really spent the last sort of week trying to get my head around the whole situation, hence why there's been no video. I did think about making a video, but um, I thought I'd collect my thoughts and, and we put it into this one where we can really dissect it. But um, I don't know whether I'm excited or a little bit worried at the minute. Mm. Is the way I put it, but uh, I'll reserve judgment until I see who, who's the new guy coming in. So, the new guy, 
A woman, you never know. <laughs> it's me! No, it's not, I'm joking. Um, bringing in a new manager is going to be easier this time. Like you said, the board haven't necessarily got that we're going to sack you vibe anymore. Less so, but still. Yeah, still because of Pep, the way Pep's leaving and the way that everything's been gone about this time, I think the way that the board have tried to keep consistency, yeah. there is a slightly different view on for on the club at the moment. And I know that after speaking to other fans. But who do you think is going to get brought in? Because there is a list of people. I, at the beginning, said that I'd be quite happy with Lee Boyer because of how well he's done at Charlton. Mm -hmm. um, they only slipped into the bottom three in the last game of the campaign before it got paused. And he had to deal with pretty much a full first team injury and was playing 16 year olds and youth and 16 yeah. year olds that aren't Jude Bellingham. Um, so he's done really well with a really depleted squad. So yeah. I, I imagine that if we didn't strengthen our squad much, much more or couldn't do or whatever, Oya would, would We'd be do okay. really well. We'd be yeah. okay. um, but I think because of what the board said in the um, their statement that they want to aim for promotion, you are looking at people like Carla, uh, Carvajal, uh, Karanka, Hewan, oh, who do you think? What are your thoughts? I'm just going to quickly read through the top 10 potential managers listed on Skybet. So Chris Hewton is currently top with Nigel Clough second, followed by Robbie Fowler, Lee Boyer, uh, Jukanovic, Warnock, Tim Walter, Hube Stevens, Lee Carsley and Craig Gardner. Yeah, I think... That last one has to, no offence Craig, but that last one has to be a bit of a joke, doesn't it really? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that would have, no, that, that's that's rubbish. I think that um, Craig will stay on as a coach probably, I think whoever comes in more than likely will take him into the background of the coaching staff. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's, no, that was that was just speculation. I yeah, think he hasn't got any experience, he's only just no. become a coach. It's, no, unfortunately he hasn't proven himself as a coach yet to let alone be a manager. I think the club and the board have three ways of going about this. And it, it all do, the, each one has its own factors. You've got, the club can either go down the route of, we're going to go for it again. We're going to go all out. We're going to get the, the best manager that we can. We're going to spend money on that manager. They're going to cost us in salary, as in what we're paying them, maybe compensation to get them out of a job if they're currently mm -hmm. in their job. And then we're going to back them to the hills with... Um, transfers that one seems not unlikely but there's certain factors in there that make you question number two is experience play it safe we get someone in that's maybe a little bit underwhelming to fans but you know we're not gonna be in any trouble we might push for top half or top 10 but it's unlikely we'll probably sit 14 15 13 you know, real safety mid-table sort of netting. Or number three is they go and appoint someone that's really um, out of the blue, someone that's very maybe up and coming, mm. someone that it probably won't cost them a lot, but has um, really caught the eye as a young or, you know, a, a fresh face from afar, maybe abroad or something like that. Um, and you've got names in that list with all that go into yeah. all three categories i think with your out the blue you've got robbie fowler i don't know where that's come from he wasn't even in the odds i don't think um until um, last night i think last night yeah he popped in which is a bit odd i don't i don't get it i i I've, i had read a couple of articles i think in the last couple of weeks actually about fowler i think rednap harry rednap was saying that um he'll be managing in a good at a good level soon mm. that wouldn't surprise me um, but I think he's only managed 40 games in Australia at two different clubs. And I think he has an average win percentage of 34%. Not terrible, not fantastic either. So for me, that one is a no-no um, and he's just a name. I don't, don't think the board are going to do that. They're not naive. They're not that naive. They won't appoint a manager that's only had 40 <laughs> games in management in Australia and throw him into the championship. Yeah. You know, it's a bear's pit. Ah, with the out, some of the outsiders, I think you had Tim. I think you've got Tim Walter there. 
And Tim Walter's got a lot of experience. Um, I say a lot of experience. His main sort of port call is in Germany. Mm. So I think he's had um, a lot of spells in second sort of teams. So Bayern Munich second team. I think he, um, and he had a, a big stint with Stuttgart as well. I think he only lasted six months there though. His record isn't terrible, but again, he's very inexperienced. He'd be someone like David Wagner where you're taking a punt on someone that's got a lot of experience in sort of um, reserve yeah. team coaching in, in Europe, but maybe, I think again, it's a big gamble um, to, to do those. Wagner was one that worked, yeah, um, but he hasn't had major success since leaving uh, Huddersfield. I think you've then got the other... Um, chap, I'm trying to think of him, Stevens, who's had much more experience than most of it in Germany again. I think he's been to most of the clubs in Germany. Um, I think he's 66. Much more experience, but again, no experience in the championship. Mm. He is... I, I don't think I'd be disappointed with him, but I'd be surprised with the lack of experience in championship. Yeah. I think it's a different beast. I've said it before. If you're going to come into the championship, it is a different kettle of fish to any league in the world. I think for me, there's four, three or four names that I would want to come in. A lot of them aren't actually on there. Um, that have experience in the championship, and for me, it would be um, Ikanovic, Karanka, Carvajal, and Houston. Yeah, I they're mean, the four for me that I think are yeah. the. If the board wants to get promoted, they're four that they should be considering and speaking to because of. You know their experience in the past. Hutton nearly got us promoted again after coming down. Karankas and Carvajal have just yeah. been in around for when they managed their, their clubs respectively. The only thing with Jukanovic is he's already in a club where he's probably earning a lot of money. So I don't think we're going to buy buy him out, so to speak. I don't know. For me, they're, they're the four that I would be considering. You very much. Um, that's very much like a, a fan's dream. Is that group you picked out all of four of those names are in the we're going to go for it that's the we're going to spend a bit of money but the, to get the, manager but the board in. said yeah that they um, want yeah. promotion well brian dick said what the board said well yeah but no i'm sure that was a that was a fair assum assumption if they don't want promotion then get whoever but i think like after the progress we've made and what the fans want we need to be pushing for the top 10. We need to be continuing to make progress. And what is the point if we're not going to completely go for it now? I think you picked out the four that are in the, um, obviously in the in that category. And I want every name in that category. I am so, um, so for it in, in terms of every single one of those names, I think you could bring in mm. and they'll do a job. I don't see why you wouldn't bring them in. For me, if we didn't have such a depleted squad, I would invest m some money in a decent manager. Yeah, I think I think you're right. No, I've said from the start, I think we, we should learn lessons from the past, where I think if you look at some of the squads we've had, you know, we had a good manager in Rowett who got that squad to seventh mm. when he was sacked. And I'm not gonna talk about sacking because, I, you know, I have my own opinion on that. <laughs> he was sacked in seventh yeah. with a decent squad. So you take the manager away, mm -hmm. but keep the squad, add a bit of quality to that squad, which we did in the January with Zola, but with a bad manager, he takes you all the way down to the relegation zone. But all you did really was take the manager out of that yeah. squad. You then have a squad that Redknapp assembled, which in my opinion, when I looked back, you've got Sam Gallagher, Shay Adams, Isaac Sal, and Jukovic as a forward four. That is devastating, if I'm honest. You've got wingers in Hotter, Boga, Magoma. You've got a really plethora, like a deep sort of depth of the squad that we, we needed. We should have been pushing. We should have been. But, but we, we didn't. didn't. And none of the managers we had that season were good. So, again, it all, you know, we can have as good a squad as we, we want, but if we don't invest in the right guy at the, at the helm, we're going to get nowhere. And so that's that why the I hate those four. No, I completely agree. My money, people asked on Twitter, who would it be on? I've said that I think the board would go for Karanka, mm -hmm. simply because I know that he'd been interviewed for the job twice. And he turned it down for, I think, one for family, personal reasons. The other, I think he got a job back home. So he's not against coming to talk to the board for the job. I just don't think he saw it as the right time. Yeah. I still think if he'd consider it, I think the board would give him another interview and try. I think that Jukanovic, I would love to have Jukanovic. 
But I think that's a pipe dream in the fact that he's okay. going to cost a lot of money. Are the board willing to pay? I think it's two million to get him out of his contract. Plus, I think he wants close to two million a year in a contract. That's a lot of money for a championship manager. <laughs> um, I think West Brom uh, walked away because yeah. of how much he wanted for weekly wages. Um, You've got, I think, Carlos Carvajal's in a job currently now. So, you, again, you'd have to pay him to get out of his contract. I don't think he'd want to leave his current job. I think he's in a, a good job. Yeah. Uh, is he in the Turkish League or has he gone to... Uh, I can't remember where he went. But, he, again, you'd have to pay him out. So, the only, I think the only major realistic two in that, for me, realistically, is Hutton and Karanka. Mm. Do I think we're going to get either of those? I think it's a chance. I think we have a good chance. I think your major issue is not selling the club. Yeah. Both managers would, would be happy to come to the club. You know, we're a good sized club with a decent squad. You've got to sell them the project. You've got to you've got to convince them that A, you're not gonna sack them after ten games if things aren't going right. You're gonna give them the tools to build a good squad. You're gonna give them a decent transfer budget and a good scouting network to go and get that squad rebuilt. And you're gonna promise them time to create what they want to create and no interferences from outside, no agents, no directors, whatever. Mm. Let them get on with it. If you do that and the, the, the contract is right for both of them will cost a bit of money, I think you've got a chance. I know the other name that's been mentioned is Clough. Um, I'm 50-50 on Clough, I'll be realistic. I know you're not a big fan, but I think that he did, he's done okay wherever he's gone, but he's nothing special. I think that's what the fans don't like. Me, he's not he just, an exciting name. Yeah, he's boring. I, I just wouldn't be able to watch. I, I would, you know. But it, his style of football, for me, is just so not where we are heading. It would almost be like taking a side or a back step. I think it'd be a sideward step from Pep. I don't think he's, I don't think he's a backwards move. I, don't, I think it'd be, we'd be safe mid-table. No worries. I don't think we'd ever look like going down but we'd never really be serious contenders for the players. We might have an outside chance, but mm. never really strong back in. Okay, so let's go on to this highly anticipated weekend's fixture against West Bromwich Albion. We've got three months to dwell on how badly we're going to get beaten this weekend. We found the tickets for the game, didn't we? The other day when we were having a tidy up, they're going to be a nice uh, memorabilia in a few years' time. So West Brom are second, they're one point behind Leeds. They have 70 points, Leeds have 71. The third place team is Fulham with 64 points, so they're not actually secure in that second place, or no. they could go up top, so they're not going to let up on this game. They're not going <laughs> to no. have their foot off the gas. I'll be honest, be ruthlessly honest from the start, I think if anybody was to have their foot off the gas, it'd be, us. it'd be us, simply because I think we know there's more winnable games to come. And I think that while I think we're safe, not mathematically safe, I think, I think that if we pick up at least two more wins, so six more points, or six draws, however you want to put it, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Because obviously we're not math mathematically safe, I think we're on 47 points. Yeah, and, Charlton are on 39 and they are at first place in the relegation. So eight points. So it's a nice cushion, but it's nothing, you know, that, you know if we lose and yeah. all of those teams win, you're, you're five points off and it's not so comfortable anymore. So Look, we're only nine points off the playoff places. Let's take a positive from that if everyone else loses. <laughs> No, I think that I actually do think though that it gives us a slightly better chance being behind closed doors because um, I think West Brom's atmosphere, while it's not fantastic, I think they can get behind the team, and I think that we're saying that uh, home advantage at the minute, especially the statistics from the Bundesliga, means nothing. Mm. Um, a lot more away teams have been winning because yeah. of the obviously being behind closed doors. So we've got a chance. And I think that the way we were before we got beat by Reading, we were unbeaten in so many games, mm. we were doing really well. Um, and I don't think we looked spectacular, but we looked okay, we looked steady. So I, I certainly don't think we should go there and get disgraced, but um, I'd be surprised if we come out of it with something. You haven't really got many options, if I'm honest, but what sort of team would you would you line up with? I don't, I don't think I'd change much. I think that... We all know the squad from this point onwards. It's pretty much what we've got. So unless there's a an injury, I think Pep was doing his his inter, um, his pre match just now as we're doing this. So I don't know if there's any injury news come out, but I think it'd be Camp, Colan, Dean or Roberts, Clark Salter. I don't know. That's the only one where I'm never sure because obviously Dean being the captain, but I think his two best ones are 
Roberts and, and Clark Salter. I think Blues put up a picture, didn't they, on, on Twitter the other day, who's your first captain at a game, and they had Duke. For me, that indicates that he's going to be the captain for the rest of the season. Might no, not be. No. Might not be. No, I don't think he needs anything to lose it. No, but I think that they'll play Roberts and Clark Salter, so continue. Poss- no, no, <laughs> fair point, possibly. Um, I think then you're looking at Pedersen, um, Bella, Sunjic, Gardner. I did see someone say you could put three in midfield and go with um, Keith and Bell in there as well. I thought it was a decent idea, but no, I think you stick with this flat four four two. Bellingham out on the left, uh, Hogan and, and Jukovic up front. Um, he's got some options. He's got Crowley. He's got Keith and Bell to bring on. He's not really got many more options after that. So yeah, um, yeah I'm hoping that we don't really sustain any injuries between now and season. Craig still play. <laughs> Technically, yes, he can, actually. There we are. <laughs> um, I think he can play up until the 30th of June. I think he's still registered. Yeah, no, no, because he's contract will end, but he's still registered as a player, I think. Or is he? I don't know. Did he not? Did he not? It's all getting very confusing I about who that. can actually play, who isn't going to play, who can't play. You know, I think we just think need he... Blues to say, this is it. the squad that we can play and we will play and just give us that however many numbers... Of people, so that we just have our don't have our hearts broken if we don't get to see Craig Gardner play all the time. I think that I would take a, a solid performance, not getting disgraced there, and come out of it looking to try and beat the the winnable teams. You looking at Cholton at home, Hull at home, um, maybe Derby at home, Stoke away, possibly Stoke away. You need to try and pick up some some points in all of these. So there's more appealing game should we say if I'm honest coming up and if we don't get any injuries then that will be a bonus for me yeah I agree I think for my score prediction I'm going to go with 3-2 West Brom only because we did hold our own against Wolves we were winning for the majority of the game but completely different scenario completely different like way of being set up and I don't know I just think West Brom are better than us but yeah, we have goals. No, I didn't. So. Yeah, I'm going to go with 2-1. I think 2-1 West Brom. I think that I think we've always looked solid this... I say solid. We've always looked competitive this season. I don't think we really get disgraced, even in the Reading game. I know it was 3-1. But for for 55 minutes, we were absolutely hammering them. And then we had a 15-minute blip where we were completely fell asleep. And, mm-hmm. they, you know, they they took their chances. So most of the games this season, we've, we've been in it. I think 2-1, I think it'll be... A, you know, a tight game. I don't think we're going to want to get pulled yeah. on Sky. So, yeah, if we can come through this one unscathed and, and try try our very best, if we can pick up a point, I'll be absolutely delighted. Um, but we'll wait and see. I think that uh, Duke saying that Hogan and Bellingham have come back and gone up another level. They look incredible um, in training. So um, I'll be delighted to see how, uh, how they're getting on and uh, see Jude carrying on where he left off. Very excited. I think that's the thing that we're probably most excited about, seeing the further on development of Jude Bellingham. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching it. The, I might say this week's episode, but it's been such a long time that it's the first one Welcome in a while. Back. Welcome back. Uh, so don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Let us know in the comments if you do like this style of video, if you think this is the way that we should go moving forward because we really enjoy this style of video. We think it works better for the channel, but we want your opinions, obviously. Comment down below what your thoughts are on the transfers, on the manager, on Pep leaving. We want to know all your opinions down in the comments below. And subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week, same time. For the next game, I don't really know what the next game is. <laughs> Keep Ryan, guys. Keep Ryan on.